Live from the Hilton at Bonnet Creek, Orlando, Florida, extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube, covering Vision 2015. Brought to you by IBM. And now your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Welcome back to Vision 2015, everybody. I'm Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick, and we're here. This is the Cube. We're live on the ground. Two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage of IBM Vision, hanging with the CFOs, performance management, sales management, gov governance, compliance, risk. John Cothart is here. He is involved in the UI, the user experience around Watson, Watson Analytics, uh, the shiny new toy, the secret weapon of IBM. John, welcome to the Cube. Thank you very much, Dave. Jeff, great to be here. Yeah. So, so tell us about your your role. Um, you've got product experience, product experience and design in your title. Yep. That's kind of cool. <laughs> Uh, it's a great place to be these days. So what does that mean? Well, I definitely have probably one of the funnest jobs for the team. So I straddle a number of different initiatives and really it's it's trying to bring the, the pretty pictorials of what we think we imagine the software to be into reality. It's how you do that translation from you know the, the pictographs of we think it needs to be designed in this particular way and we think the user is going to want to do this, that, and the other. And then how do we build a continuum? So I get to, to basically play with uh, information sets and 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 ideas and concepts all day long thinking about how is a business user going to get value and going out to these these business users and actually spending time working with them on what are they trying to achieve and make sure that that experience right flows from the design elements from all that prettiness all the way through into something that's usable and and tightly harnessed to getting them more analytics and insight so is your Role also all the way from I ideation all the way through execution. Right, so I'm the bridge. I'm the bridge from the ideation team all the way into the product management and development teams, and try to bring things backwards and forwards wherever possible. So that if something's, you know, when we get into the development life cycle in software, you end up realizing that maybe some of those ideations need to be tweaked and adjusted. And it's how do we do that in a in a consistent manner and allow that continuum. So I I sort of act a little bit like the glue to bring those teams together and make it happen. So in the keynotes this morning, you could see some of the sort of older products and you'd see them and you go, okay, that's nice, and the tables and so forth. And then all of a sudden you see this new look and feel and the speakers tell us, that now, now we're going to bring in the Watson experience, wow. Yeah. And it really shines. So you, first of all, you must be excited <laughs> to see that <laughs> very, come, very come to light. But what's the essence of what you guys are trying to achieve there? Well, you know, th earlier today we talked about analytics for all and, and maybe we'd take it a step further and, and talk about citizen data scientists. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the biggest challenges that, that Dr. Jing Shear was talking about was there's a shortage of these types of resources that are really remembering their stats courses from university and other. And there's also this penchant for wanting to easily get at information. So how do you take something that's deep and complex like optimization and predictive analytics and make it super simple, uh, make it as easy for just any user to adopt to. And so it's trying to bridge that gap of, you know, all these users have data, they have information, but they may not have insights, and they may not be able to drive those insights into action. And so when we talk about things like the, the citizen data scientists, it's about trying to get all of that capability into the hands of someone who's probably not seen this type of technology ever before. And it really transcends this, this, um, this need to design around a lot of different use cases as well in terms of mobility and in terms of how people actually work. You know, getting into what they're trying to accomplish and making it simple and straightforward with value. I so mean, it's kind of been the, the Achilles heel of decision support for, for decades, decision management. Yeah. Very powerful, but only a handful of people in the organization can actually leverage the tool set. Exactly. And and it's kind of been a failing, you guys don't use the big data you know, theme, but but you know we do all the time, but it's sort of been a, a, a failing of the big data world, is that this the, the data really is, and the insights aren't in the hands of everyday business users. Right. How is that changing? What is IBM, you know, what, what are you forecasting in terms of being able to actually achieve that? Well, I think Watson Analytics is the starting point, and, and really it, it's taking, like you said, we've got these other great capabilities in, in some of our, our more long-serving products for us in the business intelligence platform, SPSS and the like, and it's really trying to harmonize and blend the capabilities that people who use those every day, day in and day out, with that business user who probably sees them, if you think about forecasting, just as an example, people that do forecasting for marketing or human resources or operations, they might do that once a quarter, Maybe, maybe right. once every half year, and it's it's how do you actually get them to see the insights and then know what to do with 
with that with that data. So I think Watson Analytics starts creating that environment for them. It creates those biz line of business professionals the ability to see that information in a different way and start really engaging in the process and engaging in you know making that transformation from analytics. And I think when when we really um, look at how we how we want to transform. It's so that the people that need the information and insight can get at it, and they don't need to have a PhD in stats. They don't need to go and be a you know a master data management type person to curate information. And Watson Analytics is starting that for us. It's a journey, though, as as Dr. Jing Shear said earlier this morning. We're in a a great point where we can create value for individuals today, but there's so much more we want to do. There's so much more we want to extend this out to 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 really bring that capability to make the citizen data scientist. There was a slide this morning that struck me, and I'm trying to cut through sort of the marketing, and I wonder if you could put <laughs> it into perspective. Okay. Something to the effect of, so the, that everybody in the room can be as smart as the smartest person. So, something along those lines, I'm not getting it exact, and I, and I thought, at first I thought, I had a knee-jerk reaction, I said, well that can never happen, because there's always going to be somebody smarter, but then I said, well actually, if I've got a helper like mm -hmm. Watson giving me the insights, um, I'm going to elevate, you know, the rising tide lifts all, all ships. So what does that mean? That I mean, I'm probably botching the tagline, but what does that mean that the, everybody in the room has, is as smart as the smartest person? So I think for us it means that when you're working, you're collaborating. And, and the whole organization needs to collaborate together. And I think what's, what's been the challenge in that whole vacuum of sending things over to the data scientist team and getting them to work on models and getting them to figure out what the right algorithm is and then bringing it back and saying, business, this is what we should do. The idea here is that what we really want to see happen is that you take the hundreds of questions that the smart business people you have working for you, allow them to ask them. Allow them to ask them in natural language. Allow them to have something like Watson actually take that information, take all the plethora of, and corpus of data that you've got for your organization, join it with external data, whether that might be social media data, weather data if you're impacted by that, and actually start bringing all of that information to visual insights. And really what we're trying to do is then, like you said, it's, it's trying to raise, rise, raise that tide, trying to bring everyone up to a level where they can have a more intelligent conversation. Right, you, you talk to a marketer and you say, well, what's a, what's a great customer, uh, who's going to give you the highest customer lifetime value? Well, today they may have a gut feel. And, and that in many cases, most of the long-serving marketers will have that gut feel pretty much nailed. But what if we could give them 10% incremental insight and make them that much smarter by giving them slightly different visualizations and guided discovery to know what are those other variables that I didn't know about? What I, what's actually impacting my customer lifetime value? If you're an insurer and you start only focusing on premiums and you start focusing on the highest level of premiums, are you missing the boat, right? Could it be that there's a, a specific population that is a long-serving customer of yours and they may only have basic rate you know, sort of coverage? It's those types of insights that we're trying to make really visible across the organization so that when that marketer then has the answer and they can have that conversation with the C-level the executive, that they can actually all be talking the same language. And further, when they go to put this in place in action in the decision management system, as, as you rightly put, which, which have been lacking, is actually in a, a continuum that allows you to say, here's what we want to really focus on now my data scientist, the one that really has spent all that time getting the PhD, can sit there and actually work on something that's more meaningful. It it's really comes down to time to value as well as that, that upgrade of people's knowledge and awareness, really, um, of seeing something that really makes sense uh, to their business, to their questions. And I think the natural language interaction, the ability to, to create the insights um, dynamically for them and, and sort of point them to things that they didn't necessarily see in the terms of the patterns in the data, I think that's going to be very compelling in bringing and elevating those users up to just a different level of ability to, to execute for their businesses. Mm -hmm. So John, how does it actually work? I mean, you're sitting down with an analyst who, who, who maybe has never played with one of these tools or even yeah. a line of business person. How do you get them started? And what's your kind of experiences to their kind of aha moment? Do they have to have an aha moment? Do they generally find one? Is it the natural language aspect based on their experience with Google and, and kind of their, their, their not work world? How, how does it actually work on the ground to get that person to try it and then to get some positive feedback so they get into, uh, into a nice loop? Well, I think you know, we started it out with, with offering it in a freemium model, right? We started it out for that reason because we do believe that people will maybe not have an aha moment the first time they use it. Um, we want them to. I mean, we're designing it to try to do that. So what's really happening in the in, in the solution and in the service is is we're actually interrogating all of that data that they ha they bring to the table. And most most times, a professional has some type of list 
of information, you know, some type of rectangular columnar sort of set of data. And when they load that into Watson Analytics, what it's really doing right away is it's unpacking that and it's looking at it and interrogating it. And with our, with our experience of analytics over time, it's, it's applying algorithms to say, what are some of the pieces here that really matter? And so what we hoped some of the first aha moments would be is when people see what kind of quality their data is. You know, a lot of times you, you get a, some type of feed from some system and you really don't know how good that would be for analysis, whether it's even valid to, to really look at something like a prediction. And so starting with data quality, starting with the ability to start visualizing starting points, where I think everyone comes to the table with a hypothesis. They come with a question in mind. Now they can ask it. Right? And, and sometimes that's just the aha, that I ask it and the visualization coach says, oh, you mentioned state and you mentioned this, let me show you a map to represent what you're looking for. Or let me show you a tree map or a heat map. And it dynamically does that. It, do, it does that without the user having to really um, know too much about the system. So sometimes that's it. But then you get other users, and, and I'm thinking about um, uh, Legends Hospitality, who's got a, a public, publicly available quote for us. And their big thing was, they were spending months and months trying to find the variables that mattered to a particular business problem. And what they found in a week's time, in, in days of playing with Watson Analytics and looking at their data slightly differently than they had before, they got the answer that they were trying to accomplish for the last six months. And so when you start hearing those types of messaging from customers, you start realizing that the aha moment may not be right away, but definitely in terms of time, we can start creating that aha moment that much faster for them in, in trying to get the insight. And so for that basic analyst, you know, someone who's not used these tools outside of maybe a spreadsheet type tool, maybe a visualization tool that helps them build pretty graphics, they can now interact with it. And we can guide them, we can give them that guidance, which I think was, is starting to make that difference for them. What the, about, okay, sorry, I'm sorry. I, I just kidding, the, I always had my visualization question, which I think is funny. I was yeah. just going to ask that, please uh, go. Uh, 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 a, bil oh, a, here bil we go. a billion of anything, I'm just wondering how, 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 how do you, how do you visually it? represent a billion of anything to get a meaningful something on a picture? I it's, just, it, you <laughs> know, it's such a great, it, it is such a great question, guys. And it's, it, it's something that we continue to work on. I mean, this is, this is part of the journey for us. So when we started down this project, we, we do a lot of research and development at IBM, as you guys know. Um, we started the visualization engine um, sort of coach, if you will, we started that project about four years ago. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's definitely matured a lot in the four years before we brought it to market in Watson Analytics, but what we really do is we're, we're using a se series of algorithms, and, and there's actually a whole set of standards that, uh, that a German body has kind of created to say what's the best way to display things, what are the right colors, and we're adopting those into our rapidly adaptive visualization engine, and what that allows us to do is when someone asks the question and there's, you know, breakdown, we're immediately going to start leaning towards giving you a breakdown, which is really a tree map. You know, when they do compare, I mean, that's when you want to see the side, side by side bar. When you want to see a ratio, right? That might be uh, a donut chart or, or something where you can show the percentage of the of the whole and the, and the different metrics. So we've learned and we've take to, taken all of that learning over the last four years, plus, the, you know, all of the corpus of information that's available to us from standard bodies and whatnot, and pushed it into a smart algorithm. And so it's hard, it's not easy to, to get it right, but we'd like to think that we're at least giving you a series of, of relevant opportunities to, to visualize what you were looking and, for. And the visualization engine is part of Watson, is that right? Yes, that's right. And that's relatively new for this whole space. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's not just you know, uh, an engine that, that creates pie charts, it's, it's an engine that actually thinks about the data set, thinks about what the users asked, and, and this engine is um, you know, it's, it's designed to give you extensibility. So as, as business users, you can start writing that much more into it and how you want to present your information and then create a common way for your users to adopt visualization so that you can actually create standards inside of a business. So I got to ask the competitive question because there's <laughs> a lot of upstarts, talk, speaking of visualization, um, that sort of take pot, pot shots at the Cognos and the, the whole BI world and building cubes and it's slow and cumbersome and right. lacks the visualization. How do you respond to that? Well, I'd say that we're entering into a, a, a fairly new market in terms of almost a dataless approach, a uh, modelless approach maybe might even be more accurate. And so for us, the hard part is to make sure that we can carry all those customers that we've got into this new world, into a new way of, of thinking and a new way of managing their information and, and a new way to know. And I would say that what we're, what we're really trying to design is that model by which you can 
take all of these, all the greatness you've created over time and use it, but also be able to work in a, in a much more flexible uh, situation. One thing you'll notice is when you start working with Watson Analytics and you're exploring the data, just as an example, we dynamically create hierarchies where we think they make sense, but we also give you the ability to make the hierarchy for yourself. So you think of retailers, and, and a traditional hierarchy in a, in a more older school technology is likely to put you know year, then months, and days, right, and weeks, and, and everything in that chain. Well, there are lots of times when you actually want to invert that, and you want to actually look at the same week or the same month across time, across the years. And in, in more traditional tools, that's, that's a very rigid and hard thing to do. With Watson Analytics, you can do it on the fly yourself really quickly. And when you ask the questions, we'll actually dynamically flex the model to get there. So. I'd say that we, we have learned a lot about what our customers are trying to do, and we're trying to execute that in Watson Analytics to transform the way that they're, um, the way they're thinking about their data. Try, try to map the tool to the behavior as opposed to trying to map the behavior to the tool. Exactly. Well, and what I, what I tell what you call clients, you know, what I call practitioners, <laughs> is you know, it's, 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 if you look at IBM's portfolio, yeah. I mean, it's kind of better to have overlap than it is to have gaps, right? So yeah. there's, there's not a lot of, and there's always gaps, but you guys got a big portfolio and it's growing. Um, it seems to me that Watson is this glue that lays over that portfolio and allows you to sort of unlock the power through simpler analytics, through visualization, through just more powerful you know, cognitive computing. Is that the right way to think of it, that you're unlocking that power, or is that integration sort of far off? Uh, it's definitely not far off. Um, some of it's already done and completed and in market, which is great. Um, and I think it is the right way to think of it, uh, about how we want to transform analytics, how we want to make sure that we can get easy analytics, we can get the sm simple and smart analytics. Um, because really, when we look at all the, the wealth of, uh, you know, uh, my, my good friend Doug Barton who works for us calls it an embarrassment of riches. I mean, when you look at all the capabilities we've got, it really is phenomenal. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to, as we evolve how users are working, as we create a new model for them to be working, we need to, to, to make sure that we unlock their potential. And some of that means that we've got to rely on some of these more heritage, you know, longer serving products for IBM as we make that transition. So what you see is the ability to right away, right now, go in and actually connect to your Cognos environment and pull in information and do further exploration. Um, some of the, the visual storytelling is, is actually overlapped very nicely where when you go into business intelligence and you're looking at workspace and then you go and look at assemble, there's a lot of those same concepts of dragging and dropping and asking or doing intent-based authoring where you're you know, asking for data to just serve you with the visualization coach. So we are trying to, to make Watson Analytics that, that forefront for the masses and uh, as we're doing that, we want to make sure that the, the people that who have invested with us on some of these other tools also get some of that capability. And obviously we're here at Vision, and yep. sort of a, a relatively narrow focus on, on sales performance management and, and GRC, but then there's this whole Hadoop space that yes. IBM plays in. Yep. Uh, and that's another corpus of data that Watson Analytics can analyze. Right? I, exactly, I mean, we, 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 we at some point at, at different points, we talk about the styles of data that we're really trying to deal with. Most of the analytics people want to do today, in terms of the line of business, is, is definitely in, in more structured than unstructured. But there is a huge plethora of unstructured data out there. If you look at what we did with the, uh, the Twitter relationship and, and why it's in Watson Analytics, it's so that we can actually curate something that, that's meaningful. Just looking at the tweets over time is probably not as effective as if you could look at the tweets and the surrounding hashtags that were also in that tweet, along with sentiment, along with being able to look at some of the demographics of who's actually communicating with, with those hashtags is, is important. So we, we, we like to think that anything that is related around the sort of the big data story, uh, the Hadoop platform, anything that's unstructured, there's immediate value to present it in a slightly different way. And so we work very closely with you know, the Watson Explorer team and a few other, other of the Watson teams as well as the Big Data Insights teams to make sure that we can actually have a nice handshake of when we're looking at data in different formats and different styles. So we're out of time, John, but last question. Sure. Um, break out the binoculars or even the telescope. Where do you see you know, this business going in the next five to 10 years? I mean, technology's moving so fast, cognitive computing's really you know, coming to to real, is becoming real. Yeah. Where do you see this 
business going in the next five or ten years? Well, I think I think the, probably the single biggest thing that I could say is that we are we are truly going to transform the way that people work, um, and where they work and how they work. And and I guess the the what I'm really trying to get at is form factor does not matter, and it hasn't mattered for a while. But now you're getting to the point where you're going to want to be able to do voice search and get answers and insights quickly, immediately. You're going to want to have a SIS solution that allows you to ask a question. And you may not have access to all the information today, but one that suggests to you the information that will matter to your analysis. So if you're one of our, one of our good customers who talks about us every once in a while, the Cincinnati Zoo, who, who's been up here at Vision you know, a few times for us, you know, talks about the fact that they started with our, with our technology stack, being able to understand you know that actually having the ice cream you know bar open at you know 11 in the morning before lunchtime actually made them just as much money as having it open all afternoon so they might as well you know have it open at the right times but now imagine if you could be factoring in all this other external influencing data what's happening politically around the region where that particular environment is what's happening in weather all of these things so i think we're going to move into a model where people are truly asking questions of their data and, and the cognitive computing piece is going to be resolving that question and guiding you to information you didn't know that you should have access to. And that's, you know, it's not about the form factor, it's about the, the, the corpus of data that we're going to present to you and how you end up using it. IBM is a Camelot of <laughs> analytics with the embarrassment of riches. John, thanks very much for coming <laughs> on theCUBE. It's really a pleasure having you. That's great, Dave, Jeff. Thank you so much for having us and I hope you enjoy Vision 2015. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE, we're live at Vision 2015. We'll be right back.